Hi, thanks so much for joining me on another premium episode of Soap Queen TV. I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. And joining us today, we have Christy Rose from KB Shimmer for another episode of Advanced Cold Process Soap Making. Thank you, Anne Marie. I'm so excited to be here showing you another cold process swirling technique. And this one is another advanced technique. So if you haven't watched the first four free episodes of SoapQueen.tv, please stop right now, pause this, go watch those first four episodes, especially the lie safety episode. Good point, Anne Marie. Lye safety is so important, and I would definitely recommend having a basic cold process recipe under your belt before attempting an advanced technique like this. That's right. Today, Christy Rose is going to show us an in-the-mold swirl. We're going to be using lavender and lemon essential oils and three different natural colorants. And we're going to be using your beautiful new 18-bar uh, slab mold. I love these. They are made by a local furniture maker in Bellingham, Washington, and he makes heirloom quality soap molds. They're just gorgeous. Yes, yes, they are. Let's get started. Great. Before getting started, it's important to make sure your mold is lined. Now you like to use freezer paper. Correct. Or you can use a plastic drop cloth like this. Let's make sure we have all of our utensils ready. Yes. Everything close at hand. Mm-hmm. And safety gear. Yes, safety gear. Check, check. Goggles? Goggles. <laughs> the soap making goggles from Brambleberry.com. Gloves? Gloves. And we are both wearing long sleeve. Long pants, shoes and socks, and apron. Using powdered colorants, I do like to mix them up ahead of time. Okay, that's smart. I take a little bit of olive oil. So that is a very little bit, just about a teaspoon. Yeah, just about a teaspoon. Okay. I pour it into my container that I'm going to use for my swirl colorants. After I've got my olive oil added, I have my powdered colorants. And for this, we're doing what? Half a teaspoon or so of ultramarine blue. Yes. Half a teaspoon of ultramarine yellow, and then a full teaspoon of ultramarine violet? Correct. Yeah. Yes. That violet's a little bit lighter. I like to use a little bit more for that, too. Exactly. So I'm just going to take my frother, and I'm going to put it in. Well, let's talk about this. So this is a frother that's used for milk frothing, like a latte frother? Exactly. Genius. Yeah. It just allows the colorants to really mix smoothly, gets out those lumps that you might see in your clays and your ultramarine. And I have seen these at like Ikea for a buck ninety nine. Exactly. Oh, exactly. The brilliant tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice tip. So just going to put it in there. Ooh, you're right. That is getting out all the clumps. Like our last recipe, we're going to be using lye at room temperature again. Is that right? That's correct. We started out by measuring out 8.9 ounces of lye, and we have added that to 20.7 ounces of distilled water. Remember, always add your lye to your water so we don't have any volcanoes. Very important. So you have a special trick that you like to do when you're making your swirled soap. Tell me about it. I do. I like to keep my soap batter as bubble-free as possible. To do this, I take care when pouring my oils into the pot. By using my spatula against the side of the pot and slowly pouring my oils over it, I see, and that is slow. Yes. I allow it to just drip down the side of the pot. No bubbles get in, which will really help when we cut it later. Yeah, well, your soaps are always extraordinarily beautiful, and I'm sure it's because of the extra care you take when pouring your oils. Yes, it does help. You did a special essential oil blend for this. What'd you use? I used 1.5 ounces of lavender mm. and 2.5 ounces of lemon essential oh, oil. Yum. Perfect, 1.5 mm -hmm. and 2.4, 2.5. Great. You're adding this to our oils instead of adding this at Thin Trace. Yes. By doing this, I have one less thing to worry about when I'm going to mix my colors. 
Now this is an advanced soap making technique. Typically I recommend you add your essential oils or your fragrance oils at thin trace. In this case, Christy has actually tested this many times beforehand. She knows exactly how these essential oils are going to react with her recipe so she can safely add them to her oils before her lye water and before even getting close to thin trace. If you're going to do this, make sure you've tested the recipe several times with this technique before making a big batch. Just like with my oils, I'm going to pour the essential oils over my spatula down the side of the pot. No bubbles. There we go. Perfect. Now, before we add in the lye water, I want to take my stick blender and mix the oil so everything is evenly distributed. Oh, okay. There we go. Stick blender. Great. Thanks. We want to make sure this is bubble free. So a couple taps. Clunk, clunk. Bubbles out. Bubbles out. Now that we've got our oils all in, let's take our temperature. So this is right around 98, so close to 100. I like that. Great, yep, that's what I like to work with my oils. Okay, so colorants, totally mixed. Mm -hmm. This is around 100. Now it's time to add the lye water, it right? It is, yes. Great. Here is our room temperature lye water that we mixed up earlier. Great, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the stick blender that I did with the spatula. I'm gonna use it to break up the bubbles. Just pouring my lye water down the side. Okay. And now we're ready to mix. Great. So we don't want any bubbles again, so the tap, tap trick. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, there it goes. It looks like we're lightly emulsifying. It's yep. a very, very light trace. There's no way we're going to be able to catch this on camera. It's just when the soap is turned slightly translucent. Mm -hmm. Just where you can see no more oil and just a nice creamy color. I'd say that was at max 15 seconds of stick blending. Not yeah, much. Not much. So this looks good to me, so it's time to take our ladle and we're going to remove about 12 ounces of soap batter for each colorant. Sounds good. Here's our blue. Blue is done. Violet next. Violet next. And then the and yellow. Let's finish up with the yellow. Now to get these mixed in, stick blender. Stick blender. So we are not going to be coloring this large amount of white soap. We're going to be using this as the base color. Is that right? Correct. We're going to take this base color and we're going to pour it into our slab mold and use that to pour the colors in. Okay, so here's our slab mold, fully lined and ready to go. Wow, that is so beautiful. Yes, yeah, so this nice tra light trace is going to really allow us to work with our swirl colors. And now it's time for the color. Now it is time for the colors. So to get the color to sink all the way down to the bottom of the base, we're going to pour pretty high oh, to that start is off high. with. Yeah. And we're just going to pour. And slowly in an S fashion. I see that. I've got the blue done. And I'm going to work with our next color. And I'm going to make sure that I don't go over it, but go next to it. Ooh, smart tip. Yeah. So when I go and I work with the skewer to swirl it, I'm going to be able to see those colors in every single bar. That keeps the colored soap more near the surface, right? It does, okay. it does. We want to make sure that the color is throughout the whole bar, so as people use it, you can still see nice pretty swirls. That sounds like a winning soap bar to me. Yeah. Now I've saved just a little bit because I'm going to go back when I'm done with all three colors and I'm going to pour a little bit on the surface. Now we can go back with the little bit that we've got left in the cup. There's your blue and you're going to start way low. Very, very low, almost touching the soap. I see that. It's just sitting nicely on top of the soap. Yeah, if you go too high, it's going to sink down. Again. And we're really looking for the surface color this time. Got it. Here's your violet. Now, I did the blue first because I wanted that as an accent color. And I really want the purple and the yellow to pop out. I love working with oxides. They are so stable and easy to work with mm -hmm. and non-bleeding. Yes. They make beautiful colorants. So now we're going to take our skewer and we're going to swirl the colors. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom Okay. because I want to swirl the bar all the way through. So I'm just going back and forth, starting from one corner, working to the other. Nice, slow, even strokes. Yes. Now I'm going to go back, and I like to break up the uniformity of that, so I'm just going to swirl. Curly cues. Are they going all the way to the bottom again? Or they are. are. Okay. Yep, all the way to the bottom again. Nice. You have one final trick for us. Right? With these side dividers to make I sure do. the swirl goes all the way? I do. Yes. With these nice brambleberry molds, the side dividers are separate. So with these, you're going to be pushing them down in. And when you do that, you're going to be dragging the color down the sides of the soap. I love it. So the sides of the soap no longer have that 
dead white space. Correct, nice. yes. So we're gonna push each down. And then tape. Yep, if you could put a little bit of tape on there for me. Just to be on the safe side. Yep. This looks so pretty, I almost hate to put the dividers in, but I know that I need to. Yes, you do, and I heard you have a trick for us to get I those do. dividers in. The secret is to squeeze gently on the sides here. That keeps everything together. Great. And then just slowly let it sink. Oh, oh that looks so pretty. There they go. <sighs> can hardly wait to see these. Now, time to put the lid on, right? Yes. And these come with a beautiful lid, so you can stack them, or you could just use this instead of a cardboard top. And the lid just fits on perfectly. Oh, nice. Lid is on. One last step. Towel for insulation. Yep. So here we have our towel. And we're going to let this sit for at least 12 to 24 hours so it goes through gel phase to make sure those colors really pop. Yep, exactly. I love my soap to gel. I find that it makes my colors just stand out and really sing. I'm a big fan of gel phase, too. Mm -hmm. Now that our soap is put to bed and it's insulating, let's unmold the soap you made for me last week. Yes, let's. Usually, I like to take my soap, flip it over, and just push it out from the back. But you have a different way, right? Yes, I use pliers, and I take the dividers out and pull them off one by one. Let's get started. Yes. Here we go, lifting the soap out. And can you get rid of the mold? I can. Great. Oh, that looks incredible. I can hardly wait to see this. So, show me your plier technique. OK. I've just got a regular pliers here. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it on one end of the divider. And I'm just going to start pulling. Ah, I see that. Oh, it's loosening up. Yes. And then I'm going to move to the other side, do the same thing. And I'm going to work back and Kind of forth. wiggling it. Yeah, wiggling it until the whole thing pops off. Wow. Okay. That looks pretty easy. Yeah. these bars that patience is definitely a virtue when unmolding your soap. Yes, it is. If you speed up, if you try to rush it, you could rip off a side of your soap. Yikes. And after all that work mm -hmm. with the slow pouring of the oils and the extra trouble with our swirling, we definitely don't want to do that. So take time when unmolding these slab molds. Exactly. Time is your friend. It's time to look at these swirls. Yes. Oh my goodness. These are perfect. You did such an amazing job. Your technique is just rocking. Thank you very much. Now, I cheated a little because I wanted to see what it looked like in the middle and cut this open. Yes. Look at this. That looks amazing all the way through the batch, not just on the edges and the corners because of your all the way down skewer technique. Exactly. You have some great tips and techniques. Thank you so much for coming on Soap Queen today oh, to share them with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Emery, for having me. And until next time, happy soaping. First four episodes, especially the lie safety episode. Good point. Lie safety is so important. Oh, it is, especially if we want to make happy soap that doesn't. <laughs>